Hello my dear students I welcome you to this amazing platform of physics for English so guys in champion crash course we are going to do set in relation chapter today so if you talk about uh, weightages of this chapter and the type like what is the level of this chapter uh, like if, uh, with respect to our exam so let me be very clear guys like if you count easiest chapter like uh, and sort them by the difficulty wise let's say in uh, increasing order right so in that list this will be the first one the easiest one this will be the easiest chapter ever that you are going to do for j main okay fortunately for coming years set in relation will be seen in advance also but what can i tell you about uh, about this chapter in uh, from perspective of j mains easiest and if you are losing marks in set in relation chapter then definitely you don't deserve any iit or nit because it's like in class 11 12 you are doing some eighth class stuff it's like that is that easy okay so what we'll be doing today we'll be doing entire set and relation first we'll be going through entire theory and then we'll be doing all pyqs and when i'll be solving pyqs you will see how basic problems are uh, being asked from this particular chapter okay so let's start our session so i'll first explain i'll just uh, give you a brief introduction about all the theoretical uh, parts of this chapter starting with the definition of sets so what is a set obviously it is a collection of uh, objects where all the elements will be distinct from each other now there are two methods to write to represent a set the first one is called roster or tabular method in that we write all the elements but just by separate by comma let's say we have to write a set suppose we have to write a set suppose uh, we have to represent a number 3 2 3 5 7 uh, and 11 right suppose this is a set of numbers we, uh, this is a this is a collection of numbers with us 2 3 5 7 11 11 so if i have to write it in roster form it will be simply set a is equal to 2 3 5 7 11 11 like this okay and this is also a thing that uh, while writing a set you will not repeat any element every element will be distinct from each other then what is set builder form also known as property method so guys in property method what happens that we basically derive a relation between all the elements and instead of writing those elements we'll we'll write that property by which all elements are related and then we can simply write all the elements with the help of that property so for the same set for the same set a for the same collection i'm going to write here this uh, set builder form that a is an element of set a such that such that a is prime a is prime and a is less than equal to 11 that's it this is enough this is the property right this met this method is talking about some property what is that property that property is this a is prime and a should be less than 11 So you see, this these are the prime numbers which are less than eleven, two, three, five, seven, and eleven. Clear? So, in roster form, all the elements directly, and and uh, this property form, the set builder form, you will have a definition by which all the elements are related. Fine. Moving on. Obviously, you are well versed with all these definition. Let's discuss now types of set. The first one, which is null set. So obviously, the number of elements will be zero. Like say, if I if I if I write a set. suppose if i have to write a set and i give this definition okay so a is such that a, a is element of a a is even prime right a is even prime and a is greater than 3 right so a is in element of a such that a is a even prime number and a is greater than 3 now the guys the, is there any prime which is greater even prime which is greater than 2 no 2 is the only even prime so this set will obviously contain no element so i'll write like this that a is phi see empty set we denote it by phi so a is phi or you can write it like this that a is simply null there are no elements in a or you can write it like this okay then the next one is singleton set so when there is exactly one set in the exactly one element right for null set the definition is no element no element in the set right and for singleton set it is one exactly one exactly one element in the set so like 
if I write a set A, that A belongs to A, A is even prime. Because clearly there is only one number which will define this. So A will be basically equal to 2. Now that is a singleton set where there is only one element in the set. Moving on. Finite set, obviously, the number of elements, the number of elements will be finite. Number of elements will be finite. We just did one set, right? Like in the previous example, we have written prime numbers less than 11. So that is an example of finite set. In finite set, obviously there are, we cannot count the number of elements, infinite elements, right? Let's say, suppose if I define set A is set of natural number, right? Let me give you a better example, right? So infinite set, I can write simply set of natural numbers, set of natural number, right? Or it's like set of integers or like set of real numbers. Obviously, all these set, set of real numbers, all these are example of infinite set because the number of elements will not be finite. Order of a finite set, see, also known as cardinal number. Now, that is an important uh, term here. When we say order, we are basically counting number of elements. Like say, if I, if I write a set A like this, A is like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, something like this. So, I will say number of elements or the cardinal number for this set is 6. When we say order, it is basically counting number of elements, right? If I set, if I write a set A or something like this, A is A, B, C, 1, 2. So what is it? There are 5 elements, so number of elements is 5. So this is what we know as cardinal number. So cardinal number will tell you what? Number of elements present in that set. So the next one is equal set. Now what is equal set, guys? When you say equal sets, all the elements in the set are exactly equal. If you say that if A is equal to B, then A and B will have will have same elements, exactly same elements, exactly same elements, right? So it will be like writing one set twice. If set A is 1, 2, 3, set B is 1, 2, 3, A is equal to B, right? This is the thing. If you are saying sets are equal, all elements will be equal, right? If A is equal to B, then A and B will have same elements right and when we talk about equivalent set now there is a difference equivalent set the cardinal number cardinal number will be equal cardinal number will be equal remember it equal sets that means all elements are equal in equivalent set what we say the cardinal number will be equal the number of elements will be equal this for example for example let's say set a is 1, 2, 3 and set B is A, B, C. You can see A has 3 element, B has 3 element. So, this type of example here we can say that A and B, these are equivalent. Okay. A and B are here equivalent sets. Clear? Moving on. Now, these are very basic definitions, but still I am explaining just for in our information. Subset and superset. So, if, if, this is how we define it. If A is a subset of B, then all elements of A is present in B. Of elements of A are present in B. Right? So, here A is subset of B. Then we will say that A is subset of B and B will be superset. B is superset. B will be called superset of A. Right? For example, let's say for example, suppose set A is uh, 1, 2, 3 and B here. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, A, B. Right? So clearly here all elements of A are present in B. Right? Suppose uh, let's uh, take one more set. C is something 1, 7, A, B. Every element of A is present in B. So, we can say that A is a subset of B. But you can say this C here, C is having 1, 7, A, B. Now, 7 does not belong to B. We will write C is not a subset of B. Right? This is how we write C is not a subset of B. Clear? 
I hope the definition is clear, guys. Moving on. Proper subset. So in proper subset, what exactly we do? We find out all the elements, but we don't include that set itself. Okay. So before going for proper subset, let me explain you. Like there are some standard results in subset which we must know. Okay. There are some results which everyone must know. And what is that? Now that result. Let me guys. Let me. Let me. Let me. Add a page here. Just let me add a page here. Okay. So copy, paste, delete. Okay. So there are some results which I want, which I want to mention it here. Results related to subset. The first one, which is like very common, is finding number of subsets. Okay. So how exactly we write? See. For a set, suppose we have a set A, which is having element A, B, C. So if you write subset, if you write subsets of A, right? Elements are A, B, C. So in how many ways we can write C? We can write like only A, if it is having only A, or only B, or only C. Or if we take two together, A, B, B, C, A, C, or we take everything. A, B, C, and remember, empty set is subset of all the sets. Empty set will be subset of all the sets. So for this, you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight elements. There are in total eight elements. Suppose set A is uh, only A, B. So what will be subsets? So will you write subsets? Obviously, it will be set containing element A, containing element B, containing both elements A, B. The set itself. Or five. So there are four. So here we have a very simple result: number of subsets. About number of subsets. So the result is that if if number of elements in set A is m, then number of subsets. The number of subsets that we can form. The number of subsets will be two to the power m. This is a result which you must remember. Number of subsets will be two to the power m. And I think if we are done with binomial and uh, permutation by now, this should not be a problem. What exactly you are doing? If you are framing a subsets, right? If you are framing a subsets, you are just taking some elements out of it. You choose one, you choose two, you choose three, you choose four, or you choose none. It's like this set A has m elements, so it's like writing that set A has something a1, a2, a3 up to a m. Set A has m elements. And we are choosing elements out of set A. So out of M elements, you choose none. That will give you five. Or you choose one. Or you select two. Or you keep selecting. Select everything. So what is this sum, guys? This sum is nothing but two to the power m. Right? This is the binomial result that we already have derived. The sum of coefficient here will be two power m. So this is what we mean by this result. Number of subsets will be two to the power m. An extremely important result. That too also. This. In in fact, this has been used in many problems of J main. So you should be able to comprehend that what exactly this result is written. Okay, so let's move on. Now proper subset. So I'll just write down the example. Suppose guys, set A is set A is one, two, three. So while writing proper subsets, except set A, you can write everything. So if if I, if I want to write, now what will be proper subsets? Proper subset. Proper subset will be one, two, three, then one, two, two, three, one, three, right, and then five, but not one, two, three. So how many? One, two, three, 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 six, seven. So this is what happens when you say proper subset. You don't write that particular set itself. Mention everything except that entire set. So we can always write number of proper subsets. So number of proper subsets. Number of proper subsets. Suppose number of elements of A is m. The number of proper subsets will be two to the power m minus one. Right? Because why minus one? Obviously, we are removing that set A itself. That is removed. So number of proper subsets will be two to the power m minus one. Moving on with the next definition, which is power set. Now, power set is set of subsets. Power set is nothing but set of subsets. That's all. Basically, 
you know how to write subsets so just make a set out of it all those sets will act as an element that will be your power subset if you are confused see suppose set a is ab okay so power set of a will be equal to what so obviously first mention all the subsets of a so empty set element a then b then ab now these are subset of set a now make a set out of it just make a set out of it that is power set that's all set of subsets you write down all the sets then make a set out of it that will be power set okay moving on with the universal set now universal set will be always the biggest set whichever we uh, we are taking in discussion let's for example for example suppose in the whatever uh, problem you are solving or whatever assumptions you have taken suppose set a is 1 2 3 okay set b is x y set c is a comma b so universal set which is represented by u it will contain the minimum requirement of universal set for this system is having these elements 1 2 3 x y a b this is the minimum requirement these all must be present because every other set will be subset of universal set after this whatever you want to include it's up to you you can include anything right you can include anything that will be universal set so this universal set is what every other set will be a subset of universal set okay moving on with the next definition which is operation on sets so when you say union obviously you will consider elements of both the sets right so for example if set a is 1 2 set b is 1 2 3 4 so when we say union we consider all the elements of both sets obviously nothing will be repeated union will be consideration of all the elements of a or b okay the intersection so for the same set like suppose a is 1 comma 2 by intersection we mean common so 1 2 3 4 so here you can see if you take intersection so what are the common elements it is 1 and 2 so this is the intersection part the next is difference so for the same example if i say what is a minus b so a minus b here will be equal to 3 and 4 so when you say a minus b when we say difference of two sets so what happens that if you are doing a minus b what you will do what you will do you will remove sorry sorry this a minus b this will be phi here this will be phi here this a minus b will be phi this a minus b will be phi so from set a you will not consider the common elements of a and b both okay a minus b means you have to you have to you have to remove the elements which are common to a and b from a so a minus b is phi but what is b minus a guys here what is b minus here now see from b you will remove the common elements of b and a so 1 and 2 is common so that will be 3 and 4 i hope it is clear a minus b since all elements of a are present in b difference will be phi but b minus a this b minus a set will be from b will remove the elements which are common with a 1 2 was common remove it 3 4 is remaining that is b minus a then symmetric difference this symmetric difference is nothing but a minus b union b minus a that's all just remember it like this this how we write it a delta b is equal to this a minus b union b minus a that is symmetric difference complement of a set now complement of set by mean will remove elements see complement of set a complement will be universal set minus set a that's all a complement will be universal set minus set a moving on guys moving on so obviously venn diagram is the most important part of set chapter in fact uh, there are many permutation questions which can be solved using venn diagram so i hope you have idea a proper idea about it so when we say venn diagram obviously we have a structure like this universal set is the greatest set and all other sets are represented by circles like this so if i if i'm taking a system of uh, two elements a uh, two sets a and b okay so this square will be the universal set the biggest set and you can clearly see that a and b are included in that so a and b are subsets of universal set so there are different there are different uh like shading that we can do here so here you see 
this is the intersection part right this is a intersection b if we have to show union right so let's 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 quickly draw different diagrams and so this universal set this is set a this is set b and i have to show union so union means we have to consider elements from both the sets so this entire thing will be considered this is a union b we have to consider a as well as b also this is a union b then so this is universal set u this is set a this is set b this is the common part a intersection b this is union a union b suppose if i have to write a complement right in this diagram what will be a complement so a complement by a complement what do i mean universal set minus set a right it is universal set a minus set a so when i write u minus a now from universal set whatever is common to a that will be removed so that means entire a will be removed so this is a complement everything except a will be will be considered that's all this a has been removed so that is a complement u minus a this is u minus a this is the a intersection b what all you need to know see what all you need to know you need to know few more things few more venn diagram things which we use so this is set a this is set b this is u so guys if i if i if i take only this part now what is this if i shed only this part what is this this is set a this is set b so what is this part guys this is only set a and b so you can see this is purely a it does not contain any element from set b so this particular section is purely a only a purely a or we can say only a and how do i write it this is basically a minus b this section is a minus b why because from a we are removing the common part of a and b so this particular section is a minus b also also we can write it as we can write it as a intersection right this is this is what this is the uh, we can write it as a intersection with uh, this is c this is uh, a union b a union b and uh, like can we relate it with the complement here see this is a complement right a complement will be right no not not that not that so i can write it as yeah we can write it as a right a minus a intersection b also this also can we can write a minus a intersection b clear a minus a intersection b that can be also written what else what else we can write what else we can write what else if we if we have to write in terms of union or intersection what else we can write can we write this as b complement b complement intersection a can we write it like this see b complement will be everything everything except a and intersection a so b complement will be this much right b complement when we say so it will be everything except b and then intersection a will give you this one i hope you are able to relate this is b complement intersection a now there is one more venn diagram which you must be knowing and that is what is that about this universal set this is set a this is set b so we had talked about symmetric difference of sets right so if i consider this part and this part now this is a delta b this is a delta b that is symmetric difference of a and b this is basically a minus b this is a minus b union b minus a so this particular thing is known as the symmetric difference of set a and b i hope it is clear guys i hope it is clear now from venn diagram we have few more results see if i draw the system here of three sets this is a b and c a b c right so guys uh, this particular set right this one right this is what this is basically we are considering two sets at a time 
right then we have we have we have this thing so let me show you by different color so this particular part what is that this section is is only a this section is only a there is only in this part there are elements which belong to only a there is no b in it there is no c it it is only a this particular part is having a and b both right this particular part like if i talk about this thing right this particular part only this ignore the ignore this thing right so okay so what is this this is only having a and b like i hope you can easily visualize it right this particular section is having elements from two sets a and b now there is one more type here which is this like this you can see here now what is this this particular section contains every set in it a intersection b intersection c this contains a and b and c as well so when we deal with two sets we have only two varieties present uh, either we have a set like one set or we have two together here we had only one set or two or three here we have three different varieties only one set there is one space which contains only one set there is one space which contains two sets and there is one space which contains all three of it i hope i hope you are able to understand through all these diagrams okay so again if you take about uh, talk about union it will be everything to take and shed it together now there are some results related to union uh, that we know as cardinal theorem so i'll mention it shortly after explaining one concept of minima maxima concept now this is very frequent these years see let's talk about minimum of let's talk about guys minimum of minimum of number of elements in a union b right we have a set a given we have a set b given and we have to talk about minimum number of elements in a and b so let me draw some diagram by venn diagram i want you to show some results see so in the first set we have this a and b just keep looking at different sets in the second example like this is a and let's this is b a b and the third one this is a b right so i've considered three different varieties either a and b are like they are not this is called disjoint system when the intersection is phi that is called disjoint sets like here a and b are disjoint set or they have some intersection or b is completely inside a in all these three in all these cases guys if i tell if i if i said the union part if i said a union b okay if i said a union b let me let me shed the a union b part so the, here in this diagram this is a union b here it is this is a union b and in this diagram like this is a union b right did you notice one thing in all these cases what is the minimum the minimum of a union b this is what i'm going to write now it will make sense that minimum of a union b minimum number of elements in a union b is always greater than equal to the number of elements in greater set the number of elements in greater set like here you can see a union b has elements more than a a union b has elements more than a here a and b has number of elements exactly equal to a because here b was completely inside it what we can say the number of minimum minimum number of elements in a union b will be always greater than or equal to the number of elements in the greater set and this i want you to remember through these diagrams this is very important result guys i hope you should be able to like visualize it from these diagrams okay moving on to the next one which is maximum the second concept which is maximum of maximum of number of elements in a intersection b see the number of elements in a intersection b has some limitations 
now again i'll show you through these diagrams i hope you'll be able to relate see so a b here we have set a and set b and then we have set a then set b whereas in all these three if i if i shed the intersection part like this is the intersection here okay this is a intersection b here a intersection b is phi here this is a intersection b so what did you observe here so when we talk about intersection it is always less than this smaller set getting my point getting my point or not see b is the smaller set here a intersection b is exactly equal to set b here it is less than what you have set b so i think if you are getting confused let me draw a smaller set here guys let me draw something like this suppose this is set b and now if i set the intersection part this is intersection part so i think now my statement will make sense that if we are looking for maximum right if i say that maximum that maximum number of elements in a intersection b now this thing is going to be equal to less than less than equal to number of elements number of elements of this smaller set smaller set i hope guys you can see it okay it will be maximum number of elements in a intersection b will be less than number of elements of the smaller set like you can see here in every case like here in this a intersection b is this here it is zero here it is exactly equal to b so what is the maximum the maximum when a and b becomes equal clear so i hope this funda is clear to you and you are going to have many problems from this section so i hope you make it very clear to you moving on laws of algebra i think i don't need to explain you are already good with this like union b union a this is this associative law distributive law de morgan's law now this is very very useful de morgan's law which is very very useful and very easy to remember also like it's very easy to remember what you can do this union converts into intersection and you take complement both the sides and if it is a intersection b complement convert that intersection to union and take complement both the sides okay so moving on guys with the important results on the cardinal number this is the most important section of set chapter so let's start so let's start this uh, theorem with two sets first okay so when we have two sets let me draw the venn diagram first so this set a this is set b so clearly i can write So the number of elements in a union b will be equal to number of elements in a number of elements in b minus number of elements in a intersection b now i am how am i able to write this you see when we say a union b so we want to write elements from both set a as well as b right so when you say an a okay when you say an a or le let me give you a better way to visualize this let's say this particular section is having element a this is having b this is c number of elements in this section is a this section is b this section is c so when you write an a you have written basically a plus b right what is a union b this is basically a plus b plus c right a union b is a plus b plus c so when you say an a you basically said a plus b now when you said number of b elements in set b that included b plus c and then when you said a intersection b that is having set b uh, element uh, number of elements is b so you see b and b will cancel out and what is it a b c so i hope you are able to visualize that why exactly this is na plus nb minus n a intersection b okay other results there are some other results also we can write and what exactly we pronounce this in english we say that number of elements we write this as number of elements in a or b this is how we write it or we can say that this is number of elements in at least one set number of elements in at least one set 
right so when we say at least one obviously we can consider one or two set so that is why it gives us this okay few more results which we should write few more results which we uh, which we should write which is number of elements present in exactly one set number of elements present in exactly one set out of a and b so what is that to draw the Venn diagram A and B. So this time we are talking about guys, we are talking about this part. Now this is only A and this part is only B. That is what we want. We want number of elements in this set which are present in exactly one. So we want this particular section and this particular section. So how do we write it? How do we write it with help of cardinal number? Very easy. Like this is basically entire union right this thing is nothing but entire union minus a intersection b or we can write this as number of elements in a number of elements in b and you see we will mention this twice when we say a it is a plus b when we say b it is c plus b so that b parts needs to be subtracted twice do that and then you have so in many problems you will come across this statement only one set like number of elements present in only a only b or only one set so when they mention number of elements present in only or exactly one set it will mean a either only a or only b see you can improvise over here also like if someone asks that is what is number of elements number of elements present in only a now when we say only a we are talking about this part we are talking about this part so if it is only a guys what we can write what we can write can we write this as the number of elements in a and minus number of elements in a intersection b right this is what we can write number of elements present in entire set a subtract the number of elements which is present in intersection that will give you only a I hope you are able to understand this guys. I hope you are, you are able to relate with it. Moving on with the three set, the cardinal theorem with three sets. So if we have three sets, right, when we have three sets given. So if we have three sets given, we have some set of results that needs to be remembered. Let me draw the Venn diagram first. So. So we have three sets here, set A, B and C. So we, are, we have set A, B and C. This is universal set U. So if I want to write, if I want to write the first thing, the first theorem here is number of elements, number of elements present in at least one, present in at least one. Right? So when we say at least one, obviously we have to consider one, two or three all cases right so when we say number of elements present in at least one so basically we want a union b union c this means everything here present in a union b union c this is the at least one part right so when we say number of elements present in at least one so it will be equal to number of elements in a number of elements in b number of elements in c so when you write na and b and c you can clearly see when you say number of elements in A, then you have you have mentioned by writing this, you have mentioned every intersection twice. You can see when you say N A, then A intersection B is also considered and A intersection C is also considered. Right? When you write N B, when you have written N B, in that case, B intersection C is considered and B intersection A is considered. So clearly every intersection has been considered two times so we need to remove it once we need to remove it once so that is why minus n a intersection b a intersection c b intersection c but there is one more problem when you have written n a n b n c this part which is common to all three this particular part this part guys you can see this part this part got got added thrice you added it you added you added so when you say na and b and c 
this part was counted thrice right but when you subtract you see after every subtraction we are losing this part so added thrice subtracted thrice so in this result there is no contribution of that common part we need to mention it so we have to write plus number of elements in a b and c this is it so this is the number of elements present in at least one set okay number of present in at least one set now let's write the second one if i ask what will be number of elements present in exactly one right last time it was uh, number of elements present in at least this time it is exactly one set so let's draw the venn diagram first guys let me draw the venn diagram first so how do it look like we want number of elements which are present in which are present in what in exactly one so obviously we are talking about this part this is only a this is only b this is only b and this is only c this is what we are interested in only a only b only c so if you know how to write results guys you can use your brain and you can try to write it so this will be equal to what this will be equal to number of elements present in a present in b present in c fine this first then we don't want any intersection right every intersection has appeared twice so minus twice of any intersection b twice of an intersection c twice of number of intersection b and c right every intersection was appearing twice i subtract that but one problem this common part this common part was added thrice subtracted six times plus 3 minus 6 so there is negative contribution of that common part we need to make it zero plus 3 minus 6 so we need to balance it by adding 3 that common part now i hope you can relate guys this was about in exactly one set so exactly a exactly b exactly c so n a and b and c every intersection was counted twice so that is why i subtracted but while subtraction this common part this common part got added thrice subtracted 2 to 2 six times plus 3 minus 6 the contribution of this should be zero so 2 3 needed to be added now this will give you exactly one set i hope i hope i am able to make you visualize then then the third result with three sets is number of elements number of elements present in at least two now we want at least two right number of ele elements present in at least two sets so let's draw the venn diagram first okay set a set b set c we want number of elements present in at least two sets so this time at least two means either two or three so this part needs to be considered right this and this as well because if it is at least two that means we can go for three also so this is it this is what by this is what we mean by at least two right either there should be two or three also can be present now how do i write this so this is i think very simple guys you will understand number of elements in a intersection b number of elements in b intersection c number of elements in a intersection c but one problem while writing intersections we mentioned this three times we mentioned that common part three times we want only one time so subtract it twice so the overall contribution will be one so this is the result guys this is the result number of elements present in exactly two sets obviously we'll have one more result the fourth result for number of elements number of elements present in present in exactly two now when we say exactly two so what change will be there i think you can you can understand what change will be there 
when we say exactly two guys this is a b and c set a b and c is universal set so when you say exactly two so now the common intersection part will not be considered and will be restricted to only this thing where we have two sets either a b this is a c or we have b c only this so if you have understood the previous result you can write it within seconds what will be the result if you have understood the previous one last time that common part was required that is why we subtracted it only two times because three was added we had uh, to include this one time so three minus two one this time we don't want it so what we'll do we'll subtract it three times a intersection b b intersection c a intersection c minus three times a b c that's it this is the result an exam whatever condition they ask uh, you should be able to uh, you should be able to relate with all these four types so this theorem is extremely important the good thing is that 99% time the question is from the cardinal theorem for two sets they have not asked for the three one but even if it is asked guys i think you can understand it's very very simple okay moving on to the next segment which is relations the relation is the easier like it's even easier than uh, chapter sets you see ordered pair this have we right a comma b this is known as ordered pair right when we say ordered pair like a comma b obviously uh, like 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 will be two different ordered pairs 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 are two different ordered pairs right sometimes there is one word which is mentioned known as unordered pair so when when it is mentioned unordered pair when it is mentioned that we have unordered pair that will mean that 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 are similar this is what it will mean 1 comma 2 and 2 comma 1 will be counted as only one here 1 comma 2 2 comma 1 are two different ordered pairs when they mention unordered these two will be equivalent okay so when we equate two ordered pair we are equating simultaneous elements also okay suppose if you equate as if you equate that if we have ordered pair a comma b equal to ordered pair c comma d now this will imply that a is equal to c and b is equal to d the corresponding elements will be equal now what is cartesian product cartesian product is is mentioned by this thing suppose set a is having element a b c and set b is having element 1 2 So the Cartesian product of AB is given by A cross B. A cross B is Cartesian product of two sets. This Cartesian product will contain ordered pair of the form A comma B, but the first element will be of set A, second element will be of B. It will be A one, A two, A comma two, then B one, B two, C one, C two. This is Cartesian product A cross B. Okay, it's very simple to write. So start from uh, element of set A, and then keep pairing A one, A two, B one, B two, C one, C two. This is Cartesian product of A and B. Order is very important here. If you write Cartesian product of B cross A, then it will be element of B first. So it will be, let's say one comma A, then one comma B, one comma C, then two comma A, two comma B. 2 comma c this is cartesian product of b cross a okay so i hope you are uh, like comfortable with the word what is cartesian product uh, what is the meaning of the word cartesian product also you can easily mention the number of elements in a cross b always you can always mention so i'll write that result but first let's see what is the relation you see relation from set a to b relation from any set a to b is subset of cartesian product it's subset of cartesian product a cross b it will be a subset of a cross b right let let me show you some example suppose set a is 
having element 1 2 3 and set b is having element 3 4 5 now i define a relation this is how we guys this is how we write it relation is defined from set a to b okay this is how we write it relation is defined from set a to b and what is the relation it is having ordered pair a comma b obviously a will contain element of a b will contain element of b because the ordered pair will be cartesian will be taken from cartesian product a cross b order is very important relation is from a to b so the elements will be also from the cartesian product a cross b so that is why a will come first then b okay a comma b a is element of a b is element of b such that such that a plus b is an even number so in relation what we have made one property here so let's find out what are all the elements possible now see if you find out a cross b here guys if you find out a cross b here what will be a cross b it will start with 1 3 1 4 1 5 then 2 3 2 4 2 5 2 3 2 4 2 5 then 3 3 3 4 3 5 3 3 3 4 and 3 5 so this is a cross b so this relation will have elements from this cartesian product so guys uh, what type of element we want a plus b should be even number so we have to look for that ordered pair a comma b from this cartesian product a cross b which satisfy this so a plus b is even clearly 1 comma 3 is correct then 1 comma 5 is also correct then 2 comma 4 is also fine then 3 comma 3 is also fine then uh, 3 comma 5 is also fine clear so 1 2 3 4 5 so these are the elements 1 3 1 5 right 1 3 1 5 1 3 1 5 2 4 3 3 and 3 5 so these five elements so the number of elements here is 5 and what are the elements of that relation that are nothing but subset of that relation will be always a subset of a cross b if you define relation from b to a it will be subset of b cross a order is very important fine what also you need to know about the domain and range thing like what is a domain and range from of a relation so here you see when you write a comma b so this a will be domain of r whatever ordered pairs you have mentioned that part a will be domain of r and this b will be range of relation right like here if i write domain what is domain guys domain here is 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 and what is the range what is the range of this relation it is having 3 4 5 all see so don't have this conception that domain and range will be always like set a and set b no it all depends how you define that relation suppose suppose if i define a relation for the same set for the same set guys if i define a relation something like this if i define a relation something like this that relation is from set a to b relation is such that it contains order pair a comma b and and obviously that a will be of a b will be of b and if i say that a plus b is greater than 6 so what will be the elements in this relation you see relation will contain uh, it should greater than 6 so it will be only 2 5 it will be 2 5 then 3 3 3 4 3 4 and 3 5 right now this time you see what is domain guys what is domain domain is clearly only 2 and 3 and what is range range of this relation is having only 4 and 5 right only 4 and 5 this thing is range so 5 and 4 only has been used so this is what i meant to tell this like here in this example we had domain range exactly domain was a range was b not always going to happen it always depends what is the relation we have defined it all depends the type of relation that we have defined clear so let's see some results now the first result and obviously it should be clear to you that the number of elements in a cross b is always m into n number of elements will be m into n and number of relations you see what is number of relation number of relation is subset of a cross b 
so if a cross b has m into n elements then subset will be 2 to the power m n and jay main has asked questions on this particular result here yeah, there are questions which are based on this particular result we'll see it soon then the next result is sorry next one is the types of relation obviously we have uh, these types of relation problems also in jay main and those are like almost every year now so see the first one starting with void relation now all these types which we are going to study will be set the relation from a to a itself there will be set a defined so we are defining all these relations from set a to a itself so the first one which is void relation now what is void relation if 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 we define a relation in such a way that it does not contain any element like say for example i right if a, this this relation this relation is phi if this relation is phi from a to a it will be void relation right it does not contain any element okay so let me let me let me give an example suppose set n is set of natural number okay set is a set of natural number and if i define a relation okay define a relation from n to n i have defined a relation from natural number to natural number and what is the relation the relation is that it is having order pair a comma b such that such that a plus b is less than zero such that a plus b is negative now we just think of this if i have defined the relation from uh, like on set of natural numbers if the relation is defined on set of natural numbers obviously we are going to have all positive elements is there any element any ordered pair in n cross n such that a plus b will be negative not a way it is not possible right so such thing here clearly relation will be phi there will be no element so this is called void relation in n to n this particular definition is a void relation from n to n natural to natural number now the second universal relation where entire entire set become uh, the part of relation like for example if i say for the same set okay for the same set you see here relation will be equal to basically a cross a right it will be relation will be equal to set a cross a for example guys suppose if i define for the same set if relation is defined from natural to natural number and defined in such a way it contains order pair a comma b such that is positive now obviously relation will contain this entire natural number this relation will contain every ordered pair of the set n cross n why because you choose any ordered pair some will be positive so entire set will be uh, this will be satisfying this relation so this type of relation is known as universal relation this type of relation is known as universal relation the third one identity relation so in identity relation what happens that the element is related to only itself right here the definition is element is related to itself only that's all this is the definition of identity relations for example suppose i have a set a which is having element a b c so an identity relation on a will be a comma a a b comma b c comma c this is an identity relation every element is related to itself you cannot skip any element here you cannot skip a comma a b comma b no every single element should be present like if i if i if i write some relation as a comma a b comma b i skip c comma c it is not identity relation it has to be present okay let's see the next one reflexive relation guys so if relation is reflexive then reflexive on a okay if reflection uh, if relation is reflexive on set a on any given set a then then r relation r will contain 
ए कॉमा ए फॉर ऑल ए बिलोंगिंग टू सेट ए नाउ यू विल हैव सम फीलिंग ऑफ आइडेंटिटी रिलेशन ऑल्सो नो आइडेंटिटी एंड रिफ्लेक्सिव आर डिफरेंट आर इज कंटेनिंग ए कॉमा ए राइट इट कैन कंटेन समथिंग एल्स ऑल्सो बट दिस इज द मिनिमम डेफिनेशन दिस इज द मिनिमम थिंग विच इट हैज टू लाइक कंटेन विच इज ए कॉमा ए फॉर्म फॉर एग्जाम्पल सपोज अ सेट ए इज हैविंग एलिमेंट वन टू थ्री एंड एफ डिफाइन रिलेशन आर वन एज समथिंग लाइक दिस वन कॉमा वन टू कॉमा टू थ्री कॉमा थ्री नाउ इज दिस रिफ्लेक्सिव इट इज रिफ्लेक्सिव बिकॉज एवरी एलिमेंट इज प्रेजेंट हियर दिस इज रिफ्लेक्सिव नाउ इफ आई डिफाइन अ सेकेंड रिलेशन समथिंग लाइक दिस वन कॉमा वन वन कॉमा टू टू कॉमा टू टू कॉमा थ्री थ्री कॉमा थ्री नाउ इज दिस रिफ्लेक्सिव अगेन दिस इज रिफ्लेक्सिव वाई बिकॉज आई हैव वन वन टू टू थ्री थ्री आई डोंट नीड टू लुक एट अदर एलिमेंट आई नीड टू ओनली सी ए कॉमा ए फॉर एवरी ए दैट इज प्रेजेंट इन ए राइट दिस ऑल्सो रिफ्लेक्सिव लेट मी डिफाइन वन मोर रिलेशन सपोज इफ इट इज वन कॉमा वन वन कॉमा टू टू कॉमा टू वन कॉमा थ्री दैट्स ऑल नाउ दिस इज नॉट रिफ्लेक्सिव वाई बिकॉज वी हैव वन कॉमा वन वी हैव टू कॉमा टू but 3 comma 3 is missing this is missing here so it won't be reflexive clear i hope definition is clear a comma i should be present but also the condition is that every a every a has to satisfy that clear moving on to next definition of symmetric relation so for any if a comma b is an element of r then b comma a must be element of r if r is reflexive if r is reflexive this is definition okay see all definition of reflexive definition of the next transitive this is like the rejection definition see how we check if a comma b is an element of r then you will check for b comma a If a comma b is a part or uh, is a uh, element of that relation, b comma a should be. It must be part of that relation. Then only it will be. Uh, sorry, this is I by mistake I wrote it reflexive. This is symmetric. Then only it will be symmetric. Okay, a comma a implies b comma a. Then only it will be symmetric. For example, let me show you. Suppose set A is having elements one, two, three, and we are defining relation from A to A. So R one is, let's say, if I write one comma one, two comma two. Now will you call it reflect uh, symmetric? Will you call it symmetric? Yes, you will, because it's like we don't have A comma B. C. I'm telling you again, these definitions are for rejections. Okay? Do you see A comma B here? No, you have only this thing present one comma one, two comma two. You don't have you don't have that uh, this 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 thing this is like this is like a validation thing can you apply it here no if it is not we'll call it reflexive we'll call it symmetric here see a comma b b comma but we have here a comma a forms we don't have a comma b forms or in other way if you look at this as a comma b if you think b is also one so a comma a or a comma a is the same thing so this is symmetric This is symmetric. Now, if I define a other relation, something like this: one comma one, two comma three, three comma two. Now, is this symmetric? It is symmetric. Why? Because we have a comma b, b comma a present. This is symmetric. There is no problem with it. This is symmetric. If I define a relation only like this, two comma two. Now, this is also symmetric, guys. This is also symmetric. There is no problem with that. If I define something like this. One comma two, two comma one, three comma one. Is this is this symmetric? No, this is not symmetric. Why? A comma b, b comma a, a comma b. There is no one comma three. This is not symmetric. This is not symmetric. Why? Because we have one comma three is missing here. One comma three is missing. Just have this thing in mind. All these definitions we use for rejection. You see here. We don't have a comma b, so don't even check symmetric. Like in this example, 
like here we have only a comma form we'll call it symmetric if this is happening and this is not present in that case it won't be symmetric okay so moving on to the next one which is transitive relation now the definition says that if a comma b is an element of relation b comma c b comma c is also an element of relation and this implies that a comma c is also part of relation then it is transitive this is the definition guys again used only for rejection purpose a comma b is the element of relation b comma c is also part of relation and if this is implying that a comma c is also part of relation only in that case the relation will be transitive a comma b b comma c is a prerequisite a comma b b comma c it has to be present you cannot comment like you you, you will not check if you have only a comma b we'll call it we'll call it it is uh, it is like it is like transitive now you'll we'll see sir how so see if it is having only element a comma b if it is having only a comma b we don't have like anything to check for b comma c or c uh, a comma c we'll call it transitive we'll call it transitive so for a set a which is element having elements 1 2 3 if we define a relation r1 something like this 1 1 2 2 now is this is this transitive it is transitive because why i told you we don't have a comma b b comma c present if you have a comma b b comma c present their checking will start if you don't have a comma b itself just call it if you don't have a comma b b comma c both right this is the condition a comma b this is a prerequisite it has to be there if it is only a comma b just just let it pass it is transitive okay then relation uh, relation to if i define like this 1 comma 1 2 comma 3 3 comma uh, 3 comma 2 right now will you call this transitive is this transitive guys we have a comma b and we have 3 comma 2 right we have 2 3 3 2 will you call it transitive no why it's like we have a comma b we have b comma a then a comma a should be also present 2 comma 2 should be also present if it was if it was transitive here we don't have that a comma b b comma a right a comma b b comma a we should have 2 comma 2 also this is not transitive this is not transitive this is not called transitive okay let me define one more relation if i say 1 comma 1 1 comma 3 3 comma 2 1 comma 2 now is this transitive you see a comma b b comma c we have a comma c present will we call it obviously this a comma a don't even look at that don't even look at that 1 comma 3 3 comma 2 we have we have 1 comma 2 present now guys let me show you one more thing this is not transitive and you will say how sorry this is transitive this is transitive right 1 comma 3 3 comma 2 we have 1 comma 2 this is transitive right we have just look for a comma b and b comma a or b comma c part 1 comma 3 3 comma 2 it is it is it is now let me draw one more so it is 1 comma 3 3 comma 2 1 comma 2 and then i if mention if i mention like 3 comma 1 now is this transitive is this transitive no why 1 comma 3 3 comma 1 where is 1 comma 1 uh 1 comma 3 right correct then that's all that's all that's all so this is not transitive now if i write only 1 comma 2 now is this transitive if i write only 1 comma 2 we'll call it transitive this is transitive this is transitive right because we don't have anything to check for b comma c just be very clear if i have a comma b b comma c only then i'll make a comment if it is not if i have only a comma b if i have only a comma a it will be transitive make it very clear it will be transitive fine then equivalence relation if it is if relation is relation is like symmetric 
reflexive and transitive all three if it is all three if relation is all three then it is an equivalence relation it is an equivalence relation okay if re if relation is symmetric if relation is symmetric reflexive transitive everything then it will be an equivalence relation on that set a like for set a for set a suppose having element 1 2 3 what is the smallest what is the smallest what will be the smallest equivalence what will be it it will be it will be it will be 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 this set is reflexive symmetric transitive everything this is the smallest possible equivalence relation on this set a okay moving on to some more result which is this empty relation is symmetric and transitive but not reflexive remember it remember it because i told you use it for rejection for symmetric and transitive i'm telling you that is for rejection if you have nothing it is symmetric and transitive let it be don't think too much okay and number of reflexive see in from this section you had question in j main so memorize it number of reflexive relation on a set a having elements is 2 to the power n into n minus 1 we prove it using matrix method but for now just memorize the result okay both of these have been there in j main i want you to remember it in in this chapter there are not more results that's it that's it we are done with all the results guys we are done with all the results now we are going to see pyqs and you will also see how simple problems are there okay so let me start let me start with the first question and here we have out of all the patients in a hospital 89 percent are found to be suffering from heart element the number of heart element will be uh, 89 percent and 98 percent suffering from lungs infection so lungs infection will be 98 percent what else if k percent are suffering from both k cannot belong to the set see k percent is suffering from both so so obviously here we have to define a limit guys define a limit so can i say this can i say this that number of number of this uh, heart union this lungs will be 89 plus 98 minus heart intersection lungs right we have to find out limit of this we have to find out limit of this now we know in this case what is the limit of this you see union of two sets is always greater than the greater set this we already have written guys this all we already have written see let me show you again let me show you one more time let me show you one more that is very very important result see the minimum number of a union b will be always greater than the number of elements which is having the elements uh, in a greater number right like here in each case number of a union b is always greater than number of elements in set a so using the same logic using the same logic can i say can i say for that problem can i say here that this thing will be so 89 plus 98 let it be x let it be x so can i say 89 plus 98 what is that 98 17 and this 187 187 minus x will be greater than what is the minimum it will be the greater set which is 98 and what is the maximum obviously it will be 100 because this is union we are talking about a uh, this is a delt the, here we are dealing in percentage what will be maximum 100 so this particular thing should be from 98 to 100 now check the range guys check the range so what will be x minus 187 multiply by negative sign minus 100 minus 98 so take 187 that side so it will be equal to 87 and this will be 187 98 so it will be 89 it has to belong to something between 87 to 89 i hope i am right yeah 87 to 89 so it will be which one then k cannot belong to the set so you see this set because here everything is out of this domain so this will be your answer right 
and this was in 2021 so the very first problem we had the use of minimum or maximum concept there so if you have understood that topic you should not have any problem in understanding this clear let's solve next one so what is it a is n square plus n plus 10000 and b is 3k plus 1 and c is 2k sum of all the elements of the set a intersection b minus c so here see the very the set the use of set is very less this we need to first find out the numbers here so n square plus n is what n square plus n no n square minus n let's find out each set guys let's find out each set what is set a here what is set a n square minus n is less than 10000 so n into n minus 1 will be less than 10000 so obviously this n n will be from where to where 1 2 3 up to 100 and will be from 1 2 3 to 100 the set a set a what is set a you can see set a this is set a which is having elements from 1 2 3 up to 100 now what is set b let's find out set b what is set b pk plus 1 k is a natural number so b will start with 4 then 7 then 43773 10 last element will be 97 right 97 right correct uh, it will be contain 100 also right 97 is uh, 100 allowed like if i put 100 here that is fine so 3 into 33 plus 1 100 So let's mention hundred also here. And what is set C? What is set C? It's two k and belongs to natural number. So two four six eight up to hundred. Right? This is it. Now what is being said? A intersection B minus C. So what will be B minus C, guys? What will be B minus C? So from B, we have to remove. the common elements the common elements will be all the even numbers like 2 4 8 so 4 10 all these numbers will be removed so first thing will be 7 10 then 13 the next one will be 13 then 19 it will be ap and the last element will be 97 so this is b minus c set right this is b minus c and what is a intersection b minus c i hope you can understand it is exactly the same set A intersection B minus C, A intersection B minus C set will be equal to the same thing: seven, thirteen, nineteen up to ninety-seven. So this is simply AP. You have to find out sum of all the elements. You have an AP here. You can find out the sum of all the elements. So in, instead of set, this is just like writing numbers. But still, but still, this the level of question you can see here. The level of question, guys, so simple. Okay, moving on to next one. So what we have to do here? School there are three types of game to be played. None play. Uh, the students play two types of game, but none play all the three. Okay, none play all the three. So there should not be. There should not be a common intersection. So this P is definitely wrong. This Q is also wrong because we can see we have a common part, and here also we have common. So all are wrong. Basically, it should be something like this. It should be. uh see with what is saying that some of the students play two types of game so we can write something like this now there is no common part it looks uh, weird but you can see there is no common part there is no intersection of all three it's either 2 2 and 2 right so i think i think you can understand so this will be none of these now the next one consider two sets m is real both the roots of are real and b is minus then which of the following is not true so again guys this is a minus b a intersection b b minus a it's your job this is very simple problem are rule uh, roots are real so 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 what is set a d will be greater than equal to 0 what is discriminant b square so m plus 1 square b square is greater than 4ac so this is 4m Plus 16. D is b square minus 4ac. So this is m square 
प्लस टू एम तो माइनस टू एम एंड प्लस वन माइनस फिफ्टीन ग्रेटर दिन जीरो तो वी कैन फैक्टराइज एम प्लस थ्री एम माइनस फाइव ग्रेटर दिन जीरो राइट सो व्हेन यू राइट इट एम विल बिलोंग टू वेयर टू वेयर माइनस इनफिनिटी टू माइनस थ्री यूनियन फाइव टू इनफिनिटी दिस इज एम एंड दिस इज विद सेट ए दिस इज सेट ए बेसिकली दिस इज सेट ए This is set A. What is B? B is minus three to five. B is given. B is given minus three to five. So what do we have to find out? Which one will be is not true. So I think now you can find out which one is not true. A minus B. Which one is not true? So A minus B minus infinity minus three five to infinity. So I think this is not true, right? This sign A intersection B. What is? Let's let's check the other three. If you check a intersection b, what is a intersection b? This is a, this is b. So a intersection b, what is common? Only minus three is common. Okay, so this is correct. B minus a. So if I subtract b minus a, so if I try to remove common elements, so obviously uh, minus three to five it will be. This is also correct. A union b is all real. Now obviously it is all real. A is the false statement, right? I hope you can understand. A will be the false statement. Let's solve this. Solve next one. Okay. So survey shows that sixty-three percent of the people in a city read newspaper A. So newspaper A is read by sixty-three percent people, whereas seventy-six percent read newspaper B. It's seventy-six percent. If X percent of the people read both the newspapers, then possible value. You see, exact same problem we have. Exact same problem we have. That number of this number of A union B here will be greater than number of B because that is the greater set and less than hundred. The same logic we have to use. So it will be number of A number of B minus this is X percent. So this is between seventy six to hundred. That's all. So what is n plus n b? This is six three nine and seven six thirteen. One thirty nine minus six is from seventy six to hundred. So whichever is not satisfying this, that will be your answer. So this is the second. See, in twenty twenty one also we had one problem. In twenty twenty also we had same problem based on the same concept, right? Which is the range of a and b. So definitely you should write it somewhere. If you have not used it anywhere. Write it. Solve these type of question because we have seen it twice, consecutive years. Moving on to next. So let i equal to one to fifty is x i. I equal to one to n is y i t. Where each x i contains ten element. Okay, so x i is having each x i is having ten elements, and each y i is having five elements. If each element of the set T is an element of exactly twenty of set X I, do you understand the meaning of this thing? Each element of T is having is having is having uh, is is exactly twenty of set X I. Okay, that means if we find out distinct elements, different elements, different elements in T, what will be that? What will be that? 20 of set x i okay so it will be how many how many elements are there 50 into 10 divide by divide by 20 so this is uh, how much there are 50 elements each is having 10 so this is 2 25 this 25 right now exactly 6 of y so if you compare it with y so what will be that in y how many elements we have n elements So each set is having, each set is having six. So this will be n into five divided by six. So these two will be equal. Twenty-five will be equal to n into five divided by six. So this cancels out. N will be thirty. Very simple problem. Very very simple problem. We only had to find out. We only had to find out the number of elements which are distinct, because obviously you are writing one element twenty times. Right. While taking union, obviously you will not count them as different element. So 
to that means every element has been counted 20 times so how many are distinct just divide by 20 you get 20 distinct elements from xi and the same from yi so this has to be equal to this is from xi and this is from yi so since both of these are equal to t so we'll equate and you'll get n equal to 30. very simple problem you see one line questions are there in this exam always easy so set a has m elements set b has n elements fine in the total number of elements subset of a is 112 so set a has m elements set b has n elements total number of subsets of a is 112 so i can say 2 to the power m into n is 112 right is 112 more than the total number of subsets of b okay so this is 112 more than the total number of subsets of b this is given then the value of m into n is I see the total number of subsets of uh, a is 112 i think there is some mistake i'm doing this is 2 power m only yeah the total number of uh, subsets of a is 2 power m is 112 more than the total number of subsets of b 2 power m. this is 112 let's simplify it so 2 power m minus 2 power n is equal to what is 112 this is uh, 64 into no not 64 this is like uh, this is this is this is this what 8 8 into this is uh, 8 into uh, this we divide by this is 8 into 24 right sorry 8 into 14 right so if i uh, take 2 cube this side right so if i take right 2 power m or 2 power n common guys if i take 2 power n common so it will be 2 to the power m minus n minus 1 is equal to 2 power 3 into 40 i can write it like this if i take 2 power n common it will be 2 power m minus n minus 1 so if i say if i say that n is 3 if i take n as 3 and m equal to how much this is 14 here right this is 14 so if i take n equal to 3 and uh, m equal to how much n equal to 3 and m equal to if i take n equal to 4 right i think we can do this is not this is not this is not happening this is not happening i think we can factorize it one more time no this will be 2 power 4 16 so i can write or we can write 16 into 7 so 2 power m minus 2 power n will be equal to 2 power 4 into 7 so i can write it as 2 power n 2 to the power m minus n minus 1 is equal to 2 power 4 into 7 right so from here we can definitely comment that n should be equal to 4 and what should be m what should be m if n is 4 like 2 power 4 so what should be m so m should be equal to this is 2 power m so m should be equal to how much this is 8 minus 1 so this is 4 and this m minus n must be equal to must be equal to 3 so m should be equal to how much 5 right this is n equal to 4 uh, not 5 this should be equal to 7 sorry 7 n equal to 4 m equal to 7 so this will satisfy it so 7 into 4 this will be 28 the answer will be 28 right so it was just simplification based the only concept from set used here is the formula of number of subsets that's all okay moving on so here we have the problem n is from 1 to 50 and multiple of 2 so this i'm leaving up to you this is homework because this is just counting problem okay smallest subset of x containing both a and b so this is very very simple problem what you have to do if you want the smallest subset obviously like what you'll do you write set a and it's multiple of 2 you write set b and it's multiple of 7 so you can write all the sets smallest subset containing both a and b so obviously it will be the multiple of 14 so you can do it on your own very simple problem okay so 
the newspaper a and b are published in a city it is known that there are two newspapers a and b fine again we are dealing in percentage so we'll assume that 100 is the overall overall like value here so two newspapers a and b are published in a city is known that 25% of the city population reads a okay so number of i am writing as 25 and 20% reads b 20% is read by b and 8% number of elements uh, which reads both is 8 right and we are assuming that the population of town is 100 right 100 will be the universal set here so 30% of those who read a but not b so this is x1 and this is x2 right So thirty percent of those who read A but not B. So what will be that, guys? What will be that? Number of people who read A but not B, like number of elements in X one set. What is that? That will be N A twenty five minus twenty, which is five. Sorry, twenty five minus eight. That will be seventy. Twenty five minus eight. That will be seventeen. Clear? X one is what? It is who read A but not B. Okay, seventy, and how much we have to take? Thirty percent of thirty percent. So let's say a one. Now what are, what are they doing? But not be look into advertisements. So people who read a but not b. Now thirty percent of this. So seventeen. If this is seventeen, the thirty percent of seventeen. How much is that? Seventeen thirty percent will be. This will be seventeen to. Thirty by hundred. So this will be five point one. Now, what is that? The what is the other one? Forty percent those who read B but not A. Now let's find out the people who read B but not A. So that is X two, which is twenty uh, minus eight, and that will be twelve. And we have to consider forty percent of it. So that population which is looking into advertisement is forty percent of twelve. Twelve into forty by hundred. What is that? Four point eight. Okay. While fifty percent of those who read both A and B look into advertisement. What is that? A three. Fifty percent of who are looking who read both A and B. So that is eight. So it will be four. What is that, guys? You can see. The overall is a one, a two, a three. The sum of a one union, a two union, a three. So it is four, four, eight, eight by thirteen, thirteen point nine. That will be your answer. You see, the question was very easy. Question was not difficult. It is just the data which is taking time to write. Otherwise, there is no such use of any hi-fi concept here. It's simply, it's simply writing everything in a mathematical expression. That's all. The question is not difficult at all. If you feel that this question is difficult, get yourself checked. Some there is some locha with your brain. Next one. Let A, B, and C be the sets such that A intersection B is not phi. Fine. And A intersection B is a subset of C. Which of the following statement is not true? Fine. So in these questions, what we what you should always do, you should follow Venn diagram. Take help of Venn diagram as much as you can. Venn diagram will make your life easier. Trust me. So, phi is not a uh, okay. A intersection B is not phi, and it is a subset of C. So, B intersection C is not phi. Now, if I draw Venn diagram, guys, so this is what this is A, this is B, and A intersection B is a subset of C. So, I can draw it like this, or suppose this is C. Or I can draw it like this. This is A. This is B. This can be C. Something like this, right? I can draw it like this. So first thing, if I see B intersection C is not phi. So clearly, in each, it is never possible. If A minus B is a subset of C, then A will be a subset of C. So like here, you can see A minus B is a subset of C. 
a will be also subset of c so that is uh, correct right in this one a is a subset of c now is that always going to be correct let's see the other side statement first c union a intersection c union b so c union a intersection c union b will be always c so c union a obviously it will be always c so this is always correct this is correct if a minus c is a subset of b then a is a subset of b so let's see which statement is not always true second statement if if we draw it such that a minus b is a subset of c like here in this diagram if i have draw that a minus b here this is a minus b is a subset of c then a will be a subset of c that is correct right so this is also correct now last one if a minus c is a subset of b right a minus c is a subset of b okay a minus b is a subset of c so 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 a minus b is this right now this d statement says a minus c is a subset of b so how to so if i draw a diagram like this a b now a minus c is a subset so guys what is a minus c here a minus c becomes phi not a problem phi is a subset of every set so a minus c is a subset of b so fine phi is a subset of b then a is a subset of b now that is not true not true it is satisfying and it is not true so this is the statement d statement is not going to be true because in this diagram i can show a minus c is phi phi see phi is a subset of every set so the other statement says that a is subset of b but that is not the case here so this is completely incorrect slightly thinking was required i think this is the best question which we have done by now because in other questions it's simply calculation here we had to use some brain i hope you understood it moving on moving on with the next one guys so in a class of 140 students number of numbered 1 to 140 all even number students opted mathematics course so let's say the set m which uh, now what will be the number guys what will be the number see all even number elements the number of mathematics will be 140 number divide by 2 there will be greatest integer value 70 70 have opted for m then whose number divided by 3 opted physics course the number of physics course will be 140 by 3 greatest integers so what is that this is 34 uh 34 so 15 for 46 3 into 42 3 into 6 46 46 opted for physics those whose number divided by 5 opted chemistry so chemistry will be greatest integer of 140 By five, so how many? This is five to ten, four twenty-eight, right? Five to ten, twenty. Twenty-eight students have opted for chemistry. Then the number of students who did not opt for any of these courses. So total there are one forty. Total there are one forty. So what exactly they have asked? They have asked. This is this is what we have to find out. This is what we have to find out. One forty minus P union C union M. this is what needs to be calculated so m p and c is known so since we are talking about divisibility thing here so we can calculate everything what will be the number of elements which have taken m and p both so math and physics that means it should be divisible by 6 so it will be 140 divided by 6 greatest integer so what is that this will be 6 into 2 12 and 3 23 point something box will be 23 now which has taken physics and chemistry both So it will be one forty divided by multiple of fifteen. What is it? Fifteen into this will be nine. Number of students who have taken maths and chemistry. So it will be one forty divided by five into ten. This will be forty. And which we have taken everything: maths, physics, chemistry, everything. That will be one forty divided by thirty. The LCM of Five three two. What is that? Thirty. 
so this is 13 to 4 so you have all the values now you can put it and calculate so this is 140 minus 70 plus 46 that will be 116 and 116 plus 28 144 right 144 this is 144 minus 23 plus 9 32 32 14 46 right 23 plus 9 32 14 46 plus 4 so guys what is this what is this this is uh, 46 144 plus 4 48 clearly you can see this is uh, how much 140 this is minus 4 plus 46 minus 4 38 is the answer guys 38 plus 8 okay so the question was again very simple we only had to use the logic of box to find out the numbers to find out all these sets and then you have to just put in the formula again question was very simple slightly calculative but not difficult we cannot you cannot say that this question is difficult next one S is 1, 2, 3, up to 100. Number of non-empty subsets A of S is that the product of element in A is even number. The product is even number. And set A has how many elements? Set A has set S. Right? Set S has up to 50, 100. And what do you want? The product of the elements in A is even. That means we don't want where only odd is selected even at least one even is fine right we want it with at least one even right okay so total total non-empty how much total non-empty subset will be total non-empty subsets what is that that will be guys how many how many how many how many we have total 100 elements it will be 2 power 100 minus 1 right now total non-empty and if we have even right so odd so for odd obviously we'll, con we'll consider only those 50 elements so it will be 2 power 50 minus 1 right because for even we need at least one even right but for odd there will be no even at all there will be all odd numbers so how many such we can form 2 power 50 so the number where it is the product is even that will be equal to 2 power 100 minus 2 power 50 so take 2 power 50 common it is 2 power 50 minus 1 that is your answer option A. clear so i hope it should be clear because the logic is very simple here you want it even this is how you get it okay guys so let's see next question now so where we have x in this form so if we write these numbers what will be x since n is a natural number just start putting natural numbers to so put n equal to 1 so this is 4 minus 1 3 it will be 0 put n equal to 16 minus 6 10 it will be 9 put n equal to 3 64 minus 9 which is 55 54 right so this is the set x obviously it will have multiples of 9 only okay so y now y is put n equal to 1 0 put 2 9 18 and so on so clearly if you take union guys it is going to be set y itself because when you are taking union you can see the multiples which you are getting is the multiple of 9 set a also is having multiples of 9 so this will be your union okay so x is having 1 2 3 5 the number of different ordered pairs y comma z that can perform that can be formed so that y is a subset of x z is a subset of x and y intersection z is phi fine so this is what they are talking about this is x this is y this is z right right guys why is it so we have five elements we have in total five elements one two three four five so clearly for all elements one two three four five this is the system they will be fit into right y intersection z is phi so can i say that every element has three options either it, they will go here or here or here right getting my point like 
every element same for two also either they will go on this space or this space or this space so can i say that all these elements are having total three choices so overall it will be 3 to the power 5 so b will be the correct one and see this is related to permutation combination also if there are specific set of problems which can be solved using uh, set relation concepts where pnc is involved so i hope you understood this right the thing is that all those pnc questions you can finish by using venn diagram draw properly venn diagram you'll get it moving on guys moving on okay guys so let's solve this question now so which of the following statement is not correct for relation r on the set okay the first is zero is less than mod of x is neither transitive nor symmetric so i think that is perfectly correct because if you think of if you think of any uh, x y which is belonging to real let's say uh, let's say 2 comma 1 so obviously 2 comma 1 is satisfying but 1 comma 2 will not so that is true second statement says 0 is less than mod of x minus y less than 1 is symmetric and transitive so let's check see see in these problems where we have to check for symmetric transitive uh, reflexive what we do we go by the counter logic try to think of counter example try to form counter example if you can definitely you are correct if you cannot like if you cannot so definitely this will be uh, transitive or uh, symmetric whatever is given so the logic is think of counter examples here if i take example uh, order paired x comma y as something like this 0 comma half you see the difference will be between 0 to 1 and the second thing if i take half and 3 by 2 that is also fine the difference is exactly 1 but this does not imply 0 comma 3 by 2 you can see 0 minus 3 by 2 is how much 1.5 obviously it is not satisfying so this is the correct one it is wrong next one and with the set of natural numbers then the relation r is again guys see in all these cases we always look for counter example so the relation that has been given we need to first write in a uh, factorized form so this is x cube so this is x cube minus 3x square y minus xy square plus 3y cube is 0 okay so we take x square common here so we have x minus 3y then y square common here so we have x minus 3y equal to 0 so we have this thing as x minus 3y x plus y x minus y equal to 0 right so whatever ordered pair we choose it should satisfy this so let's check by reflexive so clearly it is reflexive because you see we have x minus y so if i check for x comma x right so let's call it expression f so that expression f will be definitely 0 why because we have x minus y for reflexive we check for x comma x to put x comma x here x minus x 0 it is satisfying now for symmetric let's check for symmetric and now just frame counter example you see 3 comma 1 3 comma 1 is satisfying you put here 3 minus 1 3 minus 3 0 it is satisfying but this is not implying 1 comma 3 as a part of this relation you see put 1 comma 3 here this is not going to be 0 so this is not symmetric so we got counter example not symmetric then third one you see if i check with 3 comma 1 it is satisfying then 1 comma minus 1 it is satisfying but this does not mean that 3 comma minus will satisfy you can see 3 comma minus 1 is not making this thing equal to 0 so we have got our counter example a comma b b comma c but it is not satisfying a comma c so it is not transitive it is not transitive as well so the relation is reflexive but not symmetric and transitive so b will be correct clear and this is 21 question this is how this is the type of problems from relation that you will get and what is the logic think of counter example okay moving on to next question 
ओके सो यर वी हैव डिफाइन रिलेशन आर ओवर क्लास ऑफ एन क्रॉस एंड रियल मैट्रिक्स इज एज रिलेटेड टू बी इफ देर एग्जिस्ट अ नॉन सिंगुलर मैट्रिक्स पीस इज दैट पी ए पिन वर्स इज बी राइट इफ देर एग्जिस्ट अ नॉन सिंगुलर मैट्रिक्स पी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ट्रू तो सेम लॉजिक आइज लेट स्टार्ट चेकिंग लेट स्टार्ट चेकिंग लेट स्टार्ट चेकिंग फॉर रिफ्लेक्सिव फर्स्ट तो इज रिफ्लेक्सिव देन ए कॉमा ए शुड सेटिस्फाई राइट ए कॉमा ए शुड बी पार्ट ऑफ रिलेशन दिस हाउ वी गुड दिस इज हाउ वी चेक ऑलवेज रिफ्लेक्सिव स्टार्ट विथ ए कॉमा ए लेट्स चेक इफ ए कॉमा ए सेटिस्फाइंग और नॉट तो पी ए पी इनवर्स शुड बी इक्वल टू रिप्लेस बी विथ ए तो ऑब्वियसली गाइज दिस विल बी ट्रू ट्रू इफ पी इज आई तो इफ पी इज आइडेंटिटी मैट्रिक्स डेफिनेटली दिस थिंग इज गोइंग टू बी ट्रू एंड वी नीड वॉट वी नीड दैट पी शुड बी एनी नॉन सिंगुलर मैट्रिक्स एंड ऑब्वियसली वी हैव वन हियर सो दिस इज करेक्ट सो इट इज रिफ्लेक्सिव नाउ लेट्स चेक फॉर सिमेट्रिक राइट सो वॉट इज गिवेन वॉट इज द गिवेन इन्फॉर्मेशन एट ए कमा बी इज अ पार्ट ऑफ रिलेशन सो वी हैव पी इन टू ए इन टू पी इनवर्स इक्वल टू बी तो इफ इट इज सिमेट्रिक then we have to check for b comma i right so if this relation is symmetric then b into a into p inverse this uh, p into b into p inverse should be equal to a right that is the relation definition so let's check what is check for b comma i so what is uh, b p into b into p inverse what is it so we need to see that what is happening with p into b into p inverse because if p b p inverse becomes equal to a it will be symmetric let's check so p into now is uh, p we can replace b now we can replace b we can replace b with p into a into p inverse p into p into a p inverse multiplied by uh, this is uh, b into p inverse so we have p square into a into p inverse square so i think relate i think you can relate now ki even this can be also true if p is equal to identity matrix if p is i now this should be true for at least one this is also going to be true so this can be symmetric as well and likewise you can check for transitive also so this will be an equivalence relation likewise you can check for transitive also for p equal to y it will make sense this will be true if p is equal to identity right so for p equal to i condition this will become an equivalence relation clear moving on so a is 2 3 4 5 30 -30 negative b an equivalence relation on a cross a so A minus B minus C by D only if and only if AD is equal to BC. Then the number of ordered pairs which satisfy this equivalence with four comma three. So let's say four comma three and A comma uh, C comma D is satisfying the relation. So when is this true? When A into D, so four into D is equal to B into C, so three into C, right? So the number of ordered pairs. So this d will be equal to or c c will be equal to 4 by 3 into d now how many ordered pairs will satisfy so d will be multiple of 3 so if d is multiple of 3 so guys uh, d what options d has like it can be 3 but it should not exceed 30 c cannot exceed 30 the maximum we can take is 30 so d can be 3 6 9 12 then 15 then 18 right then 21 i think that's all because we cannot take 24 it will become 32 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so there are seven such pairs possible so that's all the relation was given to you the relation was given to you you only had to check for the correct relation uh, correct number of order pairs how simple is this guys too easy so the next one R is PQ, P and Q are the same distance from the origin. 
then the equivalence class of one comma minus one. So they are saying that distance is equal from origin. So x minus zero square plus y minus zero square, right? Should be equal to distance with origin. So zero minus one square and zero plus one square. That's it. X square plus y square equal to two. So d will be the correct one, right? Which x y will satisfy relation? Whose distance from origin is equal to distance from one comma minus one? That's all. That's all you got. It's so like one step question, so guys. R one and R two be two relations defined as R one R square a square plus b square is q. Okay. Now this is something different. You see, R one is a comma b R square. Fine. A and b are a set of real numbers. A square plus b square is rational. So R one R two are both transitive. Okay, so we have to check for transitive. Okay, A square plus B square should be rational. So for R one guys, for R one, if I check, if I take A, if I take A comma B, let's say I take as uh, something something like this. If I take something as this, like pi minus four, four minus pi, right? A square plus B square should be rational. If I take A as four minus pi. And then b as pi minus one. So if you add it, so four minus pi, pi minus one, three, it is rational. Now pi minus one and square root of square root of. If I take pi minus pi, now that is that is also satisfying. Both of these are part of this relation R one. Why? You can see square and add. You are getting some rational value, but a comma b, b comma c is not implying that four minus five and five minus pi will be a part of relation. Why? Because if you add it, a square plus b square will give you nine minus two pi. What is that irrational value, guys? That is irrational value. Pi is an irrational number, so this is not transitive. For R two as well, so R so R one is so not transitive. We got R one not only. Now check for R two. A square plus B square is not rational. I think this is even easier to prove, guys. A square plus B square is not rational. Like pi comma one is not irrational, right? Is not rational. Then pi comma one and then one comma. Let's say if I write one comma uh, root. Two minus pi. Obviously, it will be not rational. But if I add these two, like this is, this does not imply that pi comma root two minus pi is part of relation. So we have got it. Both R one R two are not transitive. Now this was something different. But again, the logic behind thinking was very simple. They are talking about rational irrational. What is the simplest irrational we can think of? Pi. Use that. We got it. Clear. Moving on. Let W denotes the words in the English. The words X and Y have at least one letter common. So, okay. So at least one letter common. Then this is the relation is reflexive, symmetric, and not transitive. So just take the words. Let's say that dictionary. Dictionary will have something. Let's say elements. Cat. Toy. U. Let's take these examples. So, cat and toy, right? So, reflexive definitely reflexive because if I write cat comma cat, all letters are common. It will satisfy. Symmetric also cat, then cat obviously tag all are common. Now transitive. So, cat and toy, what is common? T is common. Toy and U, what is common? O Y. But it, but cat and U, what is common? Between cat and you, nothing, nothing is common. That's it. Not transitive. See, reflexive always true. Cat comma cat, everything is common. Then symmetric also. Cat comma tag, it is true. Then transitive cat toy. And sorry, uh, for for symmetric cat toy, we had uh, t common. For toy cat, toy cat, we have again same thing common. So there is no sense. But for transitive. 
कैट टॉय टी कॉमन टॉय यू ओ वाई कॉमन ओके बट बिटवीन कैट एंड यू नथिंग कम्स आउट एज कॉमन नथिंग इज कॉमन सो क्लियरली दिस इज नॉट ट्रांजेटिव सो इट इज रिफ्लेक्सिव सिमेट्रिक बट नॉट ट्रांजेटिव ओके सो ऑप्शन ए विल बी करेक्ट राइट दिस जस्ट वेरी सिंपल प्रॉब्लम अगेन इट कैन मेक यू स्लाइटली कंफ्यूज नंबर ऑफ डिफरेंट ऑटो पेयर्स एक्सम इज एम टी आई थिंक वी ऑर डिड ऑलरेडी गाइज राइट दिस क्वेश्चन वी हैड डन ऑलरेडी दिस कम्स आउट थ्री फॉर फाइव ओके सो लेट आर बी द रियल लाइन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग सबसे प्लेन वाई इज एक्स प्लस वन ओके एक्स बिट जीरो टू दिन विद इन फॉलोइंग थ्रू टी इज एन इक्वलेंस रिलेशन ऑन आर बट एक्स इज नॉट ओके तो एक्स माइनस वाई इज इन टीजर सो आई थिंक दिस इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी इक्वेलेंस गाइज एक्स माइनस वाई इज इन टीजर इफ यू चेक दिस फॉर इक्वेलेंस सो लेट्स चेक फॉर रिफ्लेक्सिव एक्स कॉम एक्स वॉट इज डिफरेंस जीरो विच इज एन इन टीजर सिमेट्रिक एक्स कॉम वाई वाई इफ एक्स माइनस वाई इज एन इन टीजर ऑब्वियसली वाई माइनस एक्स विल बी ऑल्सो इन टीजर that is always true transitive also why if x minus y is integer y minus z is integer then this will imply that x minus z is also integer right you can think of examples this is always true so this t is equivalence t is equivalence r y equal to x plus 1 obviously this is not even reflexive this is not even reflexive so this a is correct that's it guys that's it that's it with the all pyqs you know that this chapter has been very short the problems have been very easy but this chapter is scoring as well okay so i hope whatever pyqs i have tried to explain it made sense to you it is clear to you you can like check some uh, material from internet if you don't have any like you just download any material from internet for set relation you can download any coaching material because everything is for free now even in pw library you can find out so many problems from set relation specifically for je mains or you can download the uh, nta problems from je uh, set in relation this solve them this chapter is not going to cost you more than 5 hours and in those 5 hours you are going to score max 100% like this this set in relation thing you are going to assure your marks so completed anyhow we'll meet in next lecture with conic section okay bye bye